guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Summer Myers. I'm a homeschool mom of six kids, and on this channel we talk about all things homeschool, including paper clutter. So it's the end of the school year, you're probably winding down, you've got all these leftover workbooks and worksheets and artwork, and what do you do with all that paper? What do you do with it? Well, I wanted to show you a little bit of what I do with mine in an effort to help maybe you do what you do with yours. Does that make sense? So organizing paper clutter actually begins at the beginning of the year. So if you haven't done it, you should just give up. I'm just, just kidding, I joke, I joke. I have what I call a black folder system filled with colorful folders. And this is what I use throughout the year to organize and keep track of completed work that my kids have done. My black folder system isn't really so much as a system as it is like a box. It's a black box and it is filled with rainbow folders. And in each rainbow folder, I have it labeled as first week, second week, third week, all the way through until how long I want to school. At the end of the week, I gather all of the loose leaf paper. So things that my kids have written on, scrawled on, artwork, anything that we have done, I just pop it right into that week's folder. And this just keeps everything lined up in chronological order so I can kind of keep track. It also means I don't have to think about it anymore. It's been put away and I have a special spot in my homeschool room and I know that it will be waiting for me at the end of the year. Oh my gosh, that sounds so looming, like it's waiting for me. In a dark corner, my paper is waiting for me. And so that's what I do from the beginning of the year throughout. During the week, while we're actually doing schoolwork, if there's anything that my kid does and I'm like, wow, you did that really well. Look how beautiful your handwriting is. Or look how you ace the school spelling paper. What I'll do is I'll put a big fat star at the top of it and my kids just like glow. Oh, I'm so happy. And you know, if I was one of those really clever and creative moms, I'd put like a sticker or a cool stamp, which I have a bunch of those. I have a bunch of those, why don't I use those? At the end of the school year, I pull out my black box folder system and I go through all those papers and I find the things that are starred. This also works for workbooks or worksheets that are in a book form or whatever and I can flip through and I can find the ones that are starred right away, rip those out and put them and I compile them into work that I want to keep. This is work that genuinely showed where my children are at and their growth throughout the school year. Another tip that I want to share is that you should date everything and I mean everything. As soon as it passes through your child's hand, you should date it. In fact, I'm looking into buying one of those like library stamps that just has the date. You should also have your children practice writing the date out on anything that they do so that they have form a good habit of dating things later in life. And what this shows is that you can clearly, if things get jumbled, misplaced or whatever, you can say, oh, here's the date and you can grab it and say, this is, goes in the beginning of the year as opposed to the end of the year. Make sense? What I also do is I have several little plastic boxes of just things for artwork. And so I keep this in my guest bedroom, which is right behind my homeschool room. And whenever they do some kind of art project or if they're just coloring or painting or whatever and they're like, mommy, I really love this, typically I'll display it like on our window or in our homeschool room. And then at the end of the year, I go through their artwork and I toss the things that aren't, let's see, I toss the things that aren't of sentimental value. I do not consult my children on this. They already had their moment of glory where it was displayed. And for the most part, most of them have forgotten, but I do keep things that you know, pictures that they drew of us, of themselves, of things we went and did, just, you know, a collection. And then I gather all of that and I put it with their pile of starred work and progression that they have done for the year. I also have administrator binder stuff. So it's just a binder that keeps my attendance records. For my state, I need to keep track of immunization records as well as uh, our notice of intent that says we opened a homeschool. And so at the end of the year, I get that binder out again I make sure everything is up to date and I take it and I photocopy it so that I have a record of it on my computer as well as putting it with their collection of paper goods so those are the things that I keep normally the stack is like maybe this big maybe that big and I put it in a cardboard box that I keep up in my attic and so they're going to have their own little box of records of their schoolwork 
from previous years. This is your insurance policy. This is your rainy day. If something were ever to happen to you, if you were to get sick, if your husband were to lose his job and you need to go back to work, whatever, you have something that shows your children's progression and work. And that's something that you should keep track of. That is how I organize my kids' schoolwork throughout the year. I hope that was helpful. If it was, like, subscribe. I'm gonna be coming out with another video about what exactly I keep throughout the year. And so if that is something you are interested in, look for that video later on and subscribe to get notified for when that video drops. Cause it'll be in like a week or two if I can, you know, put that together. <laughs> Take it easy everybody, bye.